So let's talk on Ohalo. So I know you're in semi-stealth mode, but what is the problem set that you're going after around food security? Half the land acres on Earth, or about a third of the land acres on Earth, excluding the ocean, is used for agriculture today. Pasture land is a good chunk of that, but the rest is growing crops. And so if you think about what we're doing as a species is we're converting sunlight, water, CO2, and stuff in the soil, doing molecular conversion, using these machines called plants. And these machines called plants suck up molecules and convert them into things that we want. And they're really efficient because they run off the power of the sun, so they're natural solar cells. And so we have these amazing like machines. Those machines are like super inefficient relative to their potential in terms of their conversion efficiency and making stuff. Like in the US, the average yield on corn, you're getting about 175 bushels per acre. In China, you're getting 110 bushels per acre. In Kenya, you're getting 70 bushels an acre with the same soil and the same climate conditions in those three areas. And in the US, while the average is 175, there are farmers who regularly get over 300 bushels. So there's a huge difference in terms of the potential on how efficiently we can produce calories and nutrients that humans need. And this is also a a potential huge carbon sink. We can take a lot of carbon out of the atmosphere so we can be more resource efficient. We can make food at a lower cost. We can be more efficient with our land. All we have to do is get the right machines in the soil to do the right things. And so that's what genomics unlocks. They're understanding that all these machines are programmed by a software called the genome and the genome of that plant as of 10 years ago can be reprogrammed can be edited using CRISPR systems. So that's the high level kind of philosophy of what's possible. And we're not the only company in that sense. What we have come up with at this business is this crazy concept about five years ago on a specific set of edits we could make to a plant to get it to do something that would massively increase its yield, how much biomass it accumulates, how much it grows. And if we could unlock that growth potential, we would have a step change of not just 1% a year, which is the average gain in yield that we see in agriculture for the last 100 years, but potentially 50% or 100% in one year. And that's what this team has unlocked using this gene editing technology that emerged a decade ago, picking the right edits to make and then getting the plant to grow back into a plant and then seeing this outcome that we have theorized. All of that has now been proven with this business. And that's why I've gone in full time. That's the general kind of framing of the big opportunity. Are you the technology? Are you the genes? Are you the production? Are you the farms? Are you vertically integrated? Tell me a little bit about the business model. So the business model is, you know, the farmer is the customer and, you know, we make seed and plants that the farmers can then use to grow stuff. We add it the genome of the plant. And when I say this, it's not like haphazard editing. Remember, you're just taking a gene that's already in nature. And if you were to breed a plant, meaning you cross it with another plant and look at the genome, the next generation, you would see mutations in the genome naturally arise. So the edits that we're making are things that would naturally arise through plant breeding or evolution. We're just accelerating them by doing them specifically and quickly using CRISPR rather than waiting millions of years for them to arise via nature. And so we make those edits and then we make seed and we sell it to farmers and farmers put their crop on the ground and they grow stuff. And suddenly they're their economics improve, they double their profit and food costs go down and water use goes down and carbon sequestration into biomass conversion goes up and land use goes down and all the benefits that I think over time will arise, including returning acres to a more biodiverse state and making food cheaper and making calories more available and so on. In the last two years since COVID, we've unfortunately seen a reversal in global malnutrition statistics. You know, we were at 600 million people living on less than 1500 calories a day just before COVID. And now we're back up to over a billion people living on less than 1500 calories calories a day. So, you know, we do have a calorie deficiency issue globally, even though we make enough calories to feed everyone. We have to get high yielding crops in the right markets that people can survive. Climate change is challenging a lot of these regions on being able to grow efficiently. So there's a lot of socioeconomic benefits that arise from being able to do this across multiple crops. 